Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Of course, back here at Randall. We've got a pretty exciting video to do. I know we're seeing a lot of questions about the products, but also how to find customers, how to bring new products to market. So we're gonna do a bunch of things in this video. Probably gonna have a part two, um, even uh, you know coming up. But anyway, first things first, we'll kick it off. Randall, how are you? I'm doing well. You know, we got to do a part two because, you know, once we get talking, <laughs> I, I can't stop. I'm too excited. <laughs> the passion, you know, just flows through <laughs> your veins and it's great. And it's it's very visible, obviously, on, on video, but awesome. I know we're kicking it off. Uh, I know you already have a deck ready. We'll run through it, you know, kind of intro yeah. products. So very high level, of course. Don't want to get too crazy into the weeds, but <laughs> I'm sure we'll, I'll throw it to you and we'll just go through it. I'll, I'll push questions as we go and see where things go. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I wanted to throw together a deck and one out of respect for you and, and, and some of the people that follow you you um you know it's complex though right like you know whenever you're trying to do something transformational there's so much going on i, I get the question and i'm not insulted at all like when people go like okay i love it what do you do <laughs> like you know people get you know, they can't help but get excited but then they start thinking like i don't really actually know what's going on i mean it's like you know what is what does microsoft do anymore i mean they do everything and so you know when you're trying to really disrupt a market you kind of got to step back to really understand, you know, what we're doing. So I'm, I'm going to walk through this deck real fast. And I promise I won't take too much time. I'm going to share my screen. And, and the backdrop of this is kind of, you know, what I like to say is, you know, we've talked about this before. Multi-screen as a service is our cloud platform. Like that's the end all be all. That's the umbrella buzzword for what we do. It's mass. So really what mass is endeavoring to be is the internet of experiences. It's a relatively new term. I think everybody's more familiar with, uh, with internet of things, but in this case, I'm going to explain to you kind of what internet of the experiences are uh, in our context. And so, you know, as we've talked about before, the, you know, evolution of engagement has changed over time. You know, when we first got our start, we were building mobile applications. We were pivoting large brands off of web onto mobile. And so really all that was, was let me take, let me shrink your desktop experience down to a size of a mobile phone. And then, you know, that lasts for about 10 years. Well, right now we're seeing another transformational shift in the digital transformation. People kind of go, well, what does that mean? Well, it's just having a mobile application is no longer good enough. And digital transformation kind of in the age of COVID has accelerated the adoption curve. So this idea of how do I get more out of a mobile device to engage my customers is only exacerbated by something like COVID, where now everybody's freaking out about going outside. They're freaking out about being social. People are trying to figure out how to return to work. They're trying to figure out how to open their hotel back up or open their restaurants back up. And so it's just like when we implemented TSA after 9-11. Some of this is just getting people comfortable being social again. And so that's digital transformation. And it plays such a vital role in navigating that customer journey and tech enabling that customer Customer journey in a post COVID-19 world. And so we've seen that adoption curve truncate, but the reality is if we're being honest, we are very disconnected in a connected world. Like think about the last time you walked into a, a, a Best Buy or a grocery store. It's not a very technical experience. Maybe you cross an RF signal to open the door to walk in. Maybe you swipe a credit card when you leave. But other than that, I mean, I don't know about you, but there's no holograms. There's no, you know, cool things, you know, personalizing to me. No one's scanning my retina to determine what my buying history is. Like, I've been seeing this in Hollywood for a very long time. And damn it, no one's made it real. Well, guess what? we're making it real. Like that's literally what Funware was designed to do. And so when you think of Funware, think of the internet of experiences. So back in the eighties and nineties, we had this kind of digital revolution, you know, that gave way to the internet in the mid nineties to late nineties. Then you had kind of the internet of things over the last kind of decade. Well, how do we jump to digital transformation? We're missing something. You know, the Internet of Things is just a technology. It's just the access point. It's a bunch of hardware. You know, I drive down the street and I keep seeing these random towers and I'm like, it's 5G. You know, you go into a building and you'll see, you know, little Cisco access points all over the place. That's the Internet of Things. You know, every Alexa smart speaker, smart lighting. But so what? Like, I'm not doing anything with any of that. I see it. I can see it with my own eyes. But that's just hardware. That's the Internet of Things. How does it reach me as a customer? That's what we're talking about to get to digital transformation. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about an internet of experiences. That's what Funware does. 
the middleware, that, that software right between the technology and the consumer. So the consumer is informing their real world experience by accessing all that new technology that's being put out in, uh, into the market. And so that's what's really exciting for us. Like, just like the internet, you know, it was kind of around for a long time, but technology didn't catch up until the 90s where the personal computer was cheap enough and everybody could now access it. Then you started having applications get built on top of it, like Google, they got more out of it. Well, we're, doing, we're seeing the same thing now that'll underpin digital transformation where we needed all these you know, access points. We needed really good Wi-Fi inside a building. We needed really good 5G coverage. And then we need a platform that can also protect your data, your privacy, and un, you know, basically guide you through that tech-enabled journey without kind of infringing on your rights as a user, because that's really important to a lot of people. So we spent over $100 million building this platform to deliver that Internet of Experiences right in the middle. And so that's multi-screen as a service. It is exactly what you saw in Minority Report when Tom Cruise was walking through the mall and advertisements were basically personalizing to him. It's what you saw with Michael J. Fox and Back to the Future where all of a sudden holograms are appearing. That's literally what we're able to do through a mobile device. And so whether it's having that kind of contextually aware engagement, so finding out how to get the right content to the right user on the right screen at the right time in the right place in order for you to do something that's valuable to you. But let's be honest, we're a B2B company. What we're really trying to do is drive profitable behavior. That's game changing, whether it's just software or what we're even trying to start doing now where we're introducing certain blockchain components into it, not only one, to address that issue of controlling your data and owning your data, which we can do with our blockchain-enabled data exchange, or the ability to incentivize those interactions. Watch this video, go to this point of interest, take this action, refer this friend, and now I can do these micro incentives using a cryptocurrency to be able to reward you. Or if you're a business and you don't want to deal with blockchain, we'll just do it the old-fashioned way. No problem. That's the beauty of an extensible platform. We have a bunch of different features depending on what our business you know, needs, and we can actually deliver that easily over the cloud on our platform. And that's what we're trying to do here. So think about Amazon. What Amazon did for cloud services with AWS, we want to do for mobile engagement and digital transformation with mass. And so it's very simple. This is, we're not a mobile application development firm. Yes, we built the first NFL app. Yes, we built the first NASCAR app. We built and maintained most of Fox's mobile application portfolio. We're really good at building apps, but that's not how we scale as a business. How we scale as a business is taking all of that institutional learning, being able to allow new businesses to standardize on our platform, just like you would standardize on AWS or just like you would standardize on Salesforce for your CRM, we'll take all the guesswork out of it. You want to enable you know, location-aware marketing. You want to enable the ability to do you know, seamless content management. You want to enable the ability to help your you know whether it's your employees return to work or patients have a tech-enabled experience to manage the continuum of care, it doesn't matter what vertical you're in. We're across all industries, and we can deliver that rich engagement in a mobile-first world that's quickly becoming mobile only. So if you think about us, you, it's no different than you would see if you go to Microsoft's website or Amazon's website. We have products and solutions. Products easy to use software development kits. You can integrate them into your existing mobile application. If you don't need us to build it, you can actually take all of these, you know, if you go to, you know, GitHub, you can rip all this right off sample code, sample apps. You go to training.funware.com, docs.funware.com, or look at our Funware Phenom certification program. We have everything that you would expect from a cloud platform, all the training, all the materials, all the collateral, all the products, but guess what? That's for kind of, you know, the do-it-yourselfers, people that actually maybe have an engineering team, know a thing or two, can take a software development kit, an SDK or an API, and get all the benefits and functionality from it. What if you don't? What if, what if, what if you're an off-the-shelfer? Great. We have solutions for that. So by <laughs> industry, we can actually have an optimized, out-of-the-box solution for you, you know, you want to have the, you know, patient experience in, in healthcare. You want to have the shopper experience in retail. You want to have the student experience for a smart campus or the employee experience for smart workplace. No problem. 
out of the box. So normally, you know, if you're an app dev shop, which we are not, you could have two Freds in a shed pounding away at a keyboard, and they might give you an app that's going to crash within a week after about six or 12 months of fits and starts. We can deploy an enterprise-level app that's meant to be interoperable out of the box within weeks. Normally, the bottleneck is you know, approval guidelines from you know, Google or Apple. And so this is something that we've gotten very good at rinse and repeating. You get all the functionality you need. And guess what? If you want to iterate on top of that or you want specific um, integrations, so let's say we're doing a hospital. I say, great, we want your out of the box, it's called a digital front door in healthcare. We want you and your mobile application to control the entire patient experience. <laughs> but hey, we're already you know, using this parking management company to manage all our parking. And we're using this productivity solution for our employees. And we're gonna use this company for all our secure access. Um, so we can, you know, and we, we wanna be able, we have badges to open the doors. Great. We have integrations to all of those. You can now use your phone to open a door. We'll integrate the API for your parking management system, and we're going to bring all those features, all those solutions under one roof. So it's one mobile application to rule them all. But it's not a stupid passive mobile application. It's a proactive digital transformation-based mobile application that gets the most out of that user experience. And so think about that example I was using with the TSA. So many people wouldn't fly after 9-11. You needed the TSA to get them comfortable flying again. We're seeing the same thing in healthcare right now. Nobody wants to do elective surgeries because they don't want to go to the hospital. But a lot of it's kind of silly. You're not going into the, you know, you don't need to be going into the ER and passing a bunch of people coughing in order to do a total knee replacement. I can actually, we can actually use our platform to route you through a COVID free corridor. So before you actually need your you know, test, you can verify that you've gotten a COVID test, park in this parking garage, and we'll literally guide you with your phone through a corridor that will go right to your appointment, and you're not going to come in contact with anybody seeing COVID patients. So a lot of it's about just getting people comfortable being social again and using your, your phone as a mobile concierge to help guide you through that kind of complex journey. And so how do we work with customers? Again, this is kind of this idea of off-the-shelfers, industry-specific app solutions, or do-it-yourselfers, a series of SDKs and APIs that you can license from us. That's the key for dealing with us because it's a key for dealing with any software-as-a-service business. You start with a license. You license our platform. That's why we're seeing gross margins over 70%. That's why we have recurring multi-year contracts because we are not a service shop. We are not a low-margin, grind it out, build a mobile application. Forget about that. We've built this already. We spent you know nine figures doing it. And it's amazing. And so that platform, you license that platform first. And then if you want to integ integrate some things on top of that, we have kind of a menu of services that you can deliver that. And we'll put those in no problem because we've integrated with just about everybody. And we're hardware agnostic. So all of this happens kind of like magic when you're working with us. We're just giving you the best possible experience on the other side of this thing. And so, again, you know, we have – about three different flavors that we see when we see customers. Um, so a basic approach would be that kind of out of the box optimized solution. You know, call it, you know, five hundred thousand to usually, you know, three quarters of a million dollars for a total contract value, somewhere between one to five years. Again, the majority of that is a license, or we see this kind of mass services. That's where we're doing those integrations. So that might be like one integration. You know, let's say we were back to that hospital example. All they wanted to integrate was their EHR. Uh, we've integrated with Cerner, Epic, um, and we just do one. Fine, no big deal. But let's say they wanted to integrate with their parking management system. They wanted to integrate with their productivity suite. They wanted to be able to book a, a conference room. They wanted to be able to do all the content management, to be able to do all their discharge protocols. It gets a little more complex. So that kind of average deal size grows to closer to a million to a million and a half. And normally, you're actually spending more money to kind of get that deal going. So you're usually looking at a longer contract term as well, which is great for us. Again, that's recurring revenue that you'll see on our financials as a backlog and deferred revenue. And then occasionally you get people who say, look, I want the platform. I know I need the platform, 
but I want to build something world class. I want to build something that no one's ever seen before. And so, you know, politics aside, it's it's just a coincidence that it's uh, inauguration day. But we did the Trump app, and I'm not ashamed to have done it. We pitched our stuff to the Democrats. We pitched our stuff to the Republicans. The Trump aim camp ran with it. They were like, "Give me some of that." And if you compare and contrast the Trump app to the Biden app, it's night and day. And that's why we had millions of downloads, and Biden had you know tens of thousands of downloads. But those are bigger <laughs> deals, and so. You're getting the best of our platform and then the best of our mind share and understanding all the gamification, all the engagement, you know, kind of tools and tricks and software code that we've already built. And we'll integrate that into basically more of a bespoke application for the right price, of course. And so, you know, but that's not the only thing, you know, so they're a, they're a, they're a marquee customer, obviously, but we've been working with marquee customers for a long time. Uh, and so, you know, from NASCAR to NFL, NBC sports and healthcare, obviously it's a big vertical because everybody's trying to make that journey um, less complex through technology, but airports, hotels, stadiums, you name it, anywhere you've seen a bunch of customers gather and you want to demystify that journey with technology. They come to us. I mean, this is where this, this is who you need to be coming to. We're the ones you need to be talking to. But I don't want to build out a direct sales force. I don't want to. I don't want to carry the cost. I don't want to take the time. I want to scale. I want to scale fast. Like I want to ramp this company as fast as possible. Obviously, it's the best for the company. It's the best for our shareholders. And so we want to sell through our partners. Um, you, having a channel strategy is key to what we're doing going into 2021. Again, when I talk about training.funware.com, docs.funware.com, the Phenom certification program, all of that is designed so that we can be a chan so that we can be a great partner to a channel partner. So that when a channel like a hardware vendor or a software vendor or a systems integrator or a carrier sees funware that internet of experiences as a natural upsell to the internet of things you know so if i've just deployed wi-fi throughout an entire building and i want it to be a true smart building why would i not upsell them and just sell them funware on top of it like i just gave you amazing coverage now let me give you an amazing mobile experience so that all of your tenants have can get more out of this great feature set so now you can do Occupancy management, contact tracing, book a you know conference room, find a, an open desk, open every door with your phone. That's such an easy upsell if you're Cisco or Aruba or Acuity and you're doing smart lighting or you're Salto and doing locks or your HID and doing access control or you're just like a tech data or a Sirius or a diversified and you're there to try to find technologies that are driving digital transformation for others. And so these partners are great for us, um, but that you know, it takes some time. You know, you got to educate them about what you do. You got to train them. You got to get on their price book. You want their salespeople to be you know, quota carrying reps on your behalf. And so that's how we start ramping fast is once we're on their paper um, and they can sell it and they, they feel confident selling it, which we think that it's such an easy upsell, like I said, um, I think we can begin really ramping sales fast. And so we just hired our VP of channel partnerships uh, back in November. She's hit the ground running. We've had a lot of press over the last year about these partnerships that we've been signing up. So a lot of these are in flight. Um, and so we're really excited about some of the more strategic conversations we're having about how to get our platform into other channels, how to think about it almost more like a bundle. Uh, and that's where, you know, Funware, I think, really, really takes off. So we're excited about that. And, and quite frankly, some of our customers even would be great channels. You know, if we're building a small, smart workplace solution for, you know, a company that does a lot of these things around the world, you know, so if I'm a Johnson Controls or I'm a Siemens or I'm one of these just big megalith, you know, monolithic, you know, technology companies, and they're trying to get a return to work solution, for example, and we deploy that, a natural conversation is, hey, this badass smart workplace solution you just designed, can we actually white label that and sell that to all our customers? And the answer is like, hell yeah, you can. And so you, we need a couple of those dominoes to fall and, it, and it's, it's lights out and it's off to the races. And I know before we started, I was talking about this. It's shocking to me how many people just never, never seem to learn. You know, we get taught our entire life, buy low, sell high. And then we spend <laughs> the rest of our life FOMOing into stuff and buying high and then freaking out and selling low or trying to catch a falling knife. And I'm like, you know, you, you, or, or even worse, it's like, I wish I would have known. 
those are the things that break my heart. I mean, cause I'm doing it right now. I look at Amazon at over 3000 well, and I here, think, you know, hmm. so stop the uh, shared screens. So we could laugh about a few, obviously you've got a great, uh, you've got a great, uh, you know, great example. I, you know, actually crushed the presentation first things first. They, thank you so much. And, you know, you talk about, it and it's funny, you know, when you talk to anyone today and you just said Amazon and without yeah. even looking at their share price, but how crazy is it to think that, 10 years ago, people were saying, I don't know if Amazon will become what it is today yeah. or Apple will, won't become yeah. what it is today with their phones to, you know, a lot of people that are younger, it was almost a no brainer. And now you yeah. look at this and, um, you know, it's incredible. Even some of those uh, clients you listed, I didn't even know you had like huge names, even like yeah. Toronto Pearson being from Toronto myself, yeah. obviously like this is a huge airport, massive airport in North America. And uh, you listed off a ton of partners. And I think that was awesome. Like these companies are prepping for what's to come. And of course, uh, yeah. those aren't easy deals to get, um, you know, getting a million dollar deal or $3 million deal or whatever it is um, are not easy. So it's fantastic. And you guys you yeah. know, are able to deliver. So I, like you're saying about Amazon, you know, this is where things are going, you know, look at where apps yeah. are slowly moving towards. Um, and you say it there talking about grocery stores, hospitals, a lot of good examples, you know, whether you have, like for me, I've got my mom's a nurse. I think about mm -hmm. you know, all the different, you know, ways that they don't use technology or, but also do. And it's like, Whoa, like you think yeah. it'd be so easy, but that's where the world's going, you know, one step at a time, but amazing. I'll say, I, I I want, I want you to ask your mom about this because I, I know a couple of friends that are nurses and it's one of the things we're, we're, you know, we're working about now. And I'll preview kind of this idea of talking about product next, but yeah. it, it's such an exciting time. So the average employee at Funware has been here six years. Like we blow averages out of the water because, you know, to keep, to keep an engineer somewhere for six years is, is a big deal. And it's because we're working on really cool stuff. So everything from turning your phones, you know, location-based services into AR, which is super cool for discovery, but also think about like nursing, OR nurses are always told to leave the OR to go find stuff that the surgeon needs during a surgery. And surgeons are ruthless. They'll be like, go get me this widget. And like the nurse is like, I don't know where that widget is. And he's like, go, go get it. And they're out and they're running down the hallway trying to find stuff. And they literally don't know where to find it. There's an inventory management system. And then there's an operational OR and they're not connected in any way. You should be able to leave the OR, type in, or even better yet, say widget in your phone, and your phone should immediately, just like Waze or just like you know <laughs> Google Maps, direct you straight to the shelf in the drawer to where you can find that widget. We can do that right now, and then talks about doing that right now. And so that kind of you know using technology to serve you at a time and place that it's most valuable to you is huge, but it's a lot of work. And, and so you have this opportunity right now, and we think it's a great entry point for investors. It's absurd what you can get into Funware at right now. Like a lot of people don't know this about Funware. We were raising private rounds up until going public, up into the right every single time. We haven't been valued this low since 2012. And it was like our series B round. It's absurd. And so for net new investors, we're a much better off company now than we were in 2012. But you get this really cool entry point as an investor now. And, you know, what are we trying to do? It's not, it's not minuscule. If you look at our press release we just put out, we doubled the coverage of our location-based services at Baptist Health uh, South Florida from you know, up to 6 million square feet of coverage across their entire healthcare campus. It's over a million dollar contract value. Think about that. Again, that's internet experience. So I'm creating that software layer between technology and consumers. I have no way to do anything with location or context as a consumer unless I have that software layer that allows my mobile device to talk to the technology that somebody else installed. And so if we could just do that all day long, that's like almost 100% gross margin because it's just licensing our software. Now, again, if you want an application on top of that because you don't know how to really engage that consumer with a rich user experience, we'll deliver that to you either out of the box or we'll design it bespoke for you. However, if you want to do that yourself, by all means, do it. That's the beauty of having a platform. We'll license you our location tech. We'll license you our content management. We'll license you our analytics. And then you can just run on top of that. But we're that interface that brings it all together. And so 
you know, I, I couldn't be more excited about what we're doing. You know, we're going to crush it. We have an amazing team, amazing leadership. The leadership has known each other on average for over nine years. Um, and I always tell people, you know, bet on the jockey. And, you know, we don't, we don't know how to fail. So this is going to be exciting. Yeah. No, awesome. Uh, look, uh, an amazing presentation. Uh, there will definitely be a part two uh, coming up. I know there's going to be a ton of questions. You know, are looking to do a Q and a video coming up. So I'd love anyone to put questions to us, you know, about anything about the company, obviously products, yeah. you know, how you guys find clients, which I want to ask in a second here, but we'll go into more detail, you know, lots of stuff to cover, you know, only our first couple of videos here. So um, up to you, Randall, do you want to cut it here? Or did you want to do a, how you guys find customers, um, you know, little portion. Um, it's, it's up, you know, we, we can, we can, we can tease it, uh, if you want. I mean, cause I think it goes, it goes in line and I'll, I'll do a deeper dive next time. And I have a couple ideas about how we can kind of really unpack that, which is exciting. And I'll talk a little bit about kind of our, our, our broader ecosystem because it all does tie together. Uh, but the teaser is this, we want customers to find us. That's how you really begin to scale. Like nobody, nobody really goes and, and, and thinks like, okay, I'm going to go evaluate, you know, file sharing companies. Like, you know, it's like, I'm going to use Dropbox or box, like or Google drive and I'm done. Like, you know, we want to be that top of mind. Like, Hey, I need this. Um, and so I need funware. And so that's what happened with, you know, Baptist Health South Florida, quite frankly. So Presidio is our partner there. They already have the customer. They reached out to us because they know we have the best location software, the best software to get the most out of technology in place so that they could deliver a tech enabled experience. That's what we want. Like we want people to come to us and we want those partners to come to us and say, look, we need that versus us out there constantly prospecting. So yes, we want to do, put as much content out there. We want to explain what we do to people. We want to go to developer conferences. We want to go to, you know, customer conferences where there's like a CDO or a CMO, people that are really about like, how do I engage my consumers in the digital era? But the reality is we want to be able to set up our channel in such a way that partners are educated so that they are true channels so that they're out there selling. We're supporting them. They have all the collateral, all the training, all the videos. And when they need something, we're order takers. And that's what a platform is designed to do. It's designed to be delivered in that manner. And that's how you see hockey sticks in these technology companies. You know, you, you want to be like an Atlassian or a Twilio. You want to be one of these companies where you don't have to have such a high touch with customers. They know what they need. They know how to deploy it. And they know how to get it from you in a very rinse and repeatable way. So that's really what we spent so much time and so much money doing. And we're, we're, we're there. Like going into 2020, um, that's where we felt like we were finally ready to commercialize this platform. We've got a lot of good, you know, one-offs and use cases, but uh, I'll leave you with one example. You know, we had a, a hardware vendor that was just put in Wi-Fi. They were looking at, you know, upgrading that Wi-Fi, but the company was looking at possibly using a competitor. They said, we got the stake. The Wi-Fi is the stake. We need sizzle. We need to bring you into this deal and we want you to sell that you've already integrated with us and that we can deliver a smart workplace solution so they can see why they need this upgrade because now we'll get all this cool functionality. We were there. Close that deal in like less than a month. And so, you know, went down, met with, you know, and, and you know, we think about who do we sell to. This was a director of workplace technology. So they thought they were going into a meeting just to talk about Wi-Fi. What a snooze fest. That's boring. Like as long as I can log in, I'm good. But then we showed them find a friend, contact tracing, you know, room management. How do I use my phone to unlock my doors? Now all of a sudden they're like, everybody's asking questions. Like this is sexy stuff, but that's, that's where, you know, we want to be when we're talking to kind of customers is them bringing us into opportunities because we're the, we're the sexy part of it. We're the thing that makes sense. We're the thing that Hollywood has been showing forever uh, that gets people excited. And we've just finally built a platform that can realize the promise. Awesome. No, look, uh, again, thanks for the presentation. You kill this stuff. Holy, uh, definitely not your first time. And I know the people watching will definitely appreciate uh, your passion and your understanding. So fantastic. Uh, that was a great teaser. And, uh, you know, the list of clients, you know, I invite anyone who has questions, you know, I'm sure yeah. we can talk about, you know, some of the stuff that Funware did and, you know, maybe some direct examples and some cool stuff. If you've got it, if you are thinking of an industry and, oh, how could maybe something happen, you know, 
love to yeah. talk through some potential examples because uh, that's where I think there's a lot of fun uh, emphasis on fun, of course. Mark that uh, for part three. Let, let's do let's do an actual live war game. Like somebody you know, ask a question, give me a challenge that they're facing in their business, and let's figure out you know how our platform would address it and tech enable it. And I'll tease you. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a story next time on how we did this for the Atlantis at the Bahamas uh, and how we did it, you know, how we kind of thought about doing it for Carnival as well. So there's a lot of interesting insight when people just think, I have this problem, figure out how to solve it with a mobile, you know, a mobile platform and, and we'll be able to solve it. You got a problem, yo, I'll solve it. <laughs> oh, awesome well we're leaving it there uh you know with, with, with a great great teaser you know it's a song quote uh you know par- partial rapper par- you, you must do it all I mean, it's uh, it's incredible so you know randall thanks so much for joining that was a great presentation great little teaser look forward to our next video thanks jason appreciate you have a good one